These are the basic graphs we're going to be uh, inspecting and transforming. The first transformation we're going to have a look at, like I said, it starts with T, and it's called translation. So you need to call back your knowledge of um, year seven geometry to remember this word. This is about uh, a synonym for translation. It's about shifting things or moving them around the coordinate axes, okay? Now, for this point, what I want us to do, like I said to the people who were prompt, is please open up Desmos. We're gonna use it to explore the graph that we've got here. So I'm gonna pull it over here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I need a bit of space to work with here. And I'm going to move over this so I have a bit more space to work with. Okay. So what we're going to have a look at now, I'm going to start from the, um, well, let's start from the left-hand side. Okay. Um, we had y equals x. And let's start by putting that onto our axes. Y equals x. There it is. I made it thick enough. Good. Okay. So there's our first graph. And now what I want to do is explore what happens if we take away a constant, a, from the right-hand side of the equation. So you're hopefully familiar with this a little bit, but if you've never encountered it before, if you go into the uh, alphabetical keyboard in Desmos and put in A, then on the left-hand side of my Desmos screen, you can see it's prompting me to add a slider in so I can change the value of A dynamically. Uh, and now I can see Y equals X, and Y equals X minus A right beside each other, okay? Now the reason why I want us to look at this visually um, and on Desmos is so that we can actually um, fiddle about with A in a dynamic way. So have a look at what A is. It, it defaults to 1 whenever you introduce a new pronumeral. And because it's defaulted to 1, you might need to zoom in to see this a little closer. What I've got is the original graph in red, the new graph in blue, and there's been a translation from one to the other. You can see that it has moved one unit to the right. Um, X equals one, uh, A equals 1. So I've shifted over and if you change A further, you can see, I don't know why my graph is sliding as well, you can see that as I move A further across, there's A equals 5, I've now slid my blue graph across as it were, I've translated it 5 units to the right. So when we take in the general case, Y equals X minus A, what we can say is, you've taken your original graph, Y equals X, and you have translated it A units to the right. So I'm just going to come back to my original uh, working here, and on my page, even though we fiddled with this in Desmos, I do want you to actually do the graph here. I've moved over to the right, and I've moved over A units. So that means I've got a new x-intercept, it's going to be A, um, and I've also got a new y-intercept, it's going to be, in this case, negative A. All right? So I've moved over to the right. Well, what would we expect when we do uh, the parabola? Well, again, we can explore this over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out y equals x, and I'm going to square it. So there's the parabola that we had before. And then what I'm going to do here, I should have left this on the screen. Sorry about that. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say x minus a. I'm going to put brackets around the whole thing, and I'm going to square the entire expression on the right-hand side. So there's a bracket, there's a bracket, and then I square. Now when you have a look at this, hopefully in parallel to what we saw before, let me move this a bit out of the way, you have a new graph, but it's being translated. And in this case, because A equals 5, it's been translated 5 units to the right. So I can change this, of course. I could, for example, move it back over to the left. Um, if I had a negative value for A, like say, let's put it at negative, oops, I missed, negative 4. Oh, I'm so bad, my fingers are really stubby. Three will do, okay, great. So what have I got here? I've got x take away negative three, which canceling out that double negative, this is x plus three, but I like to think about it as x take away negative three because what I'm really doing is going negative three units to the right, which is the same as three units to the left. You can see the blue graph being that new version over there on the left-hand side. So um, again, we can come in and we can draw this. Let me come over to my page and I hope you're doing the same. I've got this same parabola that I had from up above, but I'm moving it, I'm translating it A units to the right. So I'm going to do my best to pop in a parabola there. Okay. Now at this point here, um, I need to think for a moment because just like before, I don't just have a new x-intercept, I also have a new y-intercept. So the way that we find y-intercepts is to let x equal zero. So if x equals zero, then when I do that substitution, I'm going to have y equals x take away 0 
sorry, um, zero take away a all squared. I should write that down. Zero take away a all squared. So I've got negative a squared, the negative cancels. So that leaves me the y-intercept of a squared. So there we go. I'm gonna pop that in on the y-axis, okay? Now, this is as good a point as any to pause and point out that for both the first graph on the left-hand side for translation and this new one, um, I haven't put in a point for scale. Um, you saw I had to just pick a point somewhere on the graph. And the reason why I don't need a point for scale on either of these is because once you have an x-intercept and a y-intercept that aren't the same on the origin, um, this can't be any other graph. Um, it's unambiguous. So I don't need to find some other point somewhere over here and say, oh, where is this, right? Um, the a and the a squared on the x and y intercepts, uh, on the x and y axes respectively, they give me enough information, okay? Now, Abby, you've asked the question about down. I will come to down in a second. We're just not quite there yet, up and down. We're just thinking about horizontally at the moment, and I'll explain why um, as soon as we've done this last one. Hopefully, you can now start to predict what is this last graph going to look like. Maybe you're drawing it. Yeah, this is actually, um, it's a very perceptive pickup. We'll come back to it shortly, I promise, because you're right. It's actually kind of interesting that up, down, and left, right, in some contexts, and we'll explain what those are in a second, in some contexts can actually be the same thing, but um, we're getting ahead of ourselves, spoilers, okay? So, last one just on this row, right? W what am I doing here? In each case, let me highlight it for you. Um, I'm doing this minus A, that's what I'm doing algebraically. You can see it in here, and then in here, and then lastly, over here. And in each of the cases, let's now confirm it for the final one. What we're seeing is, let's go up into that index, change it to a three, do the same over here, change it to a three. Okay, let's put this back over in the positive. In each case, what we're seeing is a horizontal translation. Now, why should this be something we actually expect? Why should this minus A, in the place that we've put it, lead to a horizontal transformation? Well, let's graph this along and then we'll um, give the explanation. If I put that over there, why should we expect that a minus a in the places that we've put them, namely here, here, and here, why should that lead to a horizontal transformation? Well, I want you to look closely at where the minus a is in each of these different equations. There's three of them, right? x minus a, x minus a all squared, and then x minus a all cubed. That minus a, what is it attached to? And the answer is, in each of these cases, it's attached to the x, right? Now, the x-axis is the horizontal axis. So if we have x take away a, we should expect that that change we're making should be fiddling around with the x values, which is horizontally, right? Now, I know in the case of y equals x minus a, the very first one, it looks like it's an up-down thing as well. Um, I'll come to that shortly. But I, I want you to see unambiguously for the parabola, and also for the cubic, this is definitely a left-right change, yeah? Um, I could move over into the left if I made a negative, but all these examples here, just generally speaking, I've moved over to um, the right, to a um, x equals a. In this case, I'm gonna need uh, negative a cubed as my intercept, okay?